Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the technique that you can use to efficiently caulk crown molding in this example, or any trim for that matter. This technique will work on anything. It's a real simple technique. We're using DAP, which a lot of people I know hate. I do believe that they changed their formula because I used to hate this DAP Alex as well. But we gave it another chance and we're very surprised by it. So I think it's gotten better. I know a lot of people dislike this, but this is what we use and I'll show you. It doesn't really matter what caulking you're using. I'm just telling you what we use. You can just take a little sliver off that. And that's about, I don't know, a 16th or an eighth inch hole right there. You don't want to have it too large. It says an eighth right here on the tube and then a quarter. And then, what does that say, five sixteenths. Um, if you're cutting down there, you've got a bigger problem. <laughs> so you want to keep it up here at the 16th or an eighth inch hole. If you're cutting down there at that 5 16th, uh, just go ahead and take out what you put in and reinstall it and make it new because that's a huge gap you're trying to fill. So don't cut the tube too low because you're just going to use way too much caulking. So we'll get right into this. This particular scenario here, where I'm going to be caulking this crown molding on a white ceiling. Um, the caulking is white. We got white caulking. It's pretty much all we use for all of our paint grade stuff. The only thing you're going to need for this is a caulking, caulking tube. And then we use a damp rag. A lot of people use a sponge, but we just use a damp rag. It's nice and wet, but not to the point where it's dripping water. So just wet it completely, submerge it or soak it in water and then wring it out to where it's not dripping. That's perfect. But you want to keep this rag wet because that's how you're going to keep your finger clean, which is very important. You don't want any caulking buildup on your finger. I know they make tools and everything where you can wipe caulking, but like they say, there's a sucker born every minute. Just use your finger. There's no reason to buy all these fancy caulking tools. <laughs> so now that we have exactly what we need, we have our wet rag, our caulking tube cut to the proper um, diameter, we can go ahead and get started on this. Now, well, one other thing too, I forgot. You can cut this at an angle, 45 degree angle, a lot of people do that. I just always cut it straight. If you're gonna cut it straight, you need to have it straight on the wall like this. If you're going to have it at a 45, you're going to want to have it like this. So you'll notice that the caulking will kind of fall off if you don't have it set up. Uh, if you're not holding it to the way that you have it cut. So if you hold, if you cut it straight, hold it straight. If you cut it at 45, hold it at 45. It's not that big of a deal. And I can hold this at 45 and still get it pretty good for the most part. It just takes experience. But with that, um, Tell you about this situation here. We've got these walls. We smoothed out the walls. This, all the walls in this house were textured. I smoothed this one out and we still got to sand it. So I'm not really worried about coming down too low with the caulking on here, but I still want to keep it tight. If this was a wall that was already painted, we would take our blue masking tape and we use the blue stuff because um, it's very sensitive. It's not doesn't have a lot of adhesion on the back of it. But what we do, if this was a finished room, it was painted. And I'll show you in another room that is finished and painted so you can see how clean the, the line pulls. Um, we just take this and then we hold it about a sixteenth of an inch away from the molding. And we just work it over so it's like a sixteenth of an inch away. So it just looks like a nice cut in line. So what I would do at this point is just press the trigger or pull the trigger, squeeze the trigger, whatever you want to call it. And as I'm pulling that trigger, I'll show you on this blue tape because you'll be able to see it. The rate at which I pull the trigger is the rate at which I need to be pulling the gun, moving the gun rather whether I'm pushing it or pulling it. So as you pull this, you want to move this at the same rate 
and you'll get a feel for that. Also, that is based on how wide you cut this tip here because I'll show you right now. This will show up on camera pretty good, I'm thinking. Um, let me put another piece of tape so I can show you a few, few ways to do it wrong as well. So this should show up really good against that blue tape. All right. And before that dries, this is a good point. If you caulk something, you want to pretty much wipe it right away. So you want to push that up in there and get it taken care of immediately. Because as soon as it comes out of the tube, it's oxidizing and that means it's drying. And that means it's going to build up and get chunky and get weird. Um, so you want to head, go ahead and only work a section that you can reach with your hands. We would never walk into a room, caulk the whole room and then go back and start, you know, wiping it off. You only want to work what you can work within less than a minute, I would say. So anyways, let me talk about that rate of pull on the trigger and the rate of motion with the caulking gun. So you'll be able to see this. As I squeeze the trigger, I want to move the caulking gun in the same way. I'm squeezing the trigger the whole time, slowly, and moving the gun at the same rate. It's a wavy line because I don't have a piece of trim to go up against. Usually you'll have a trim piece of trim to guide up against so you won't have a, it looks like a, um, I just don't know what I'm doing here, but it's just hard to keep it straight. So let me show you what can happen if you don't move the gun as fast as you're pulling the trigger. So it'd be like this. It's just way too much caulking and way too much of, a, of the gun being squeezed too hard. So this is way wrong. You would wipe that and you'd be, it'd be wasting the caulking for one and you'd be having a lot of what we call snow plow is what I've, I've known it as when I first was learning how to use a caulking gun. And do this, the guy told me, you don't want snow plow which is when, you, a snow, when a snow truck drives through and it leaves like a line. This is very exaggerated, but it leaves like a big buildup. Just imagine one of those snow pushing trucks driving through the road to clear the road. On the sides of it, it has big buildups of snow that the plow didn't get. So in this case, your finger represents the plow, the caulking represents the snow. You don't want any snow plow. You want to be able to just push it in and wipe it like this. There's no snow plow, it's just smooth, a smooth surface. So that's what can happen. Or if you move the gun too fast, you can have it like, um, let's see, that's not really a good example, but I don't know. You can have the line too thin where you're not really feeding the gap. Cause you'll notice there's gaps up here. You'll never get this perfect perfectly flush with the ceiling because of textured ceilings, number one, um, uneven joists, number two, other variables that come into play where you're going to need to use some kind of caulking. So with a white ceiling, a white trim and a white caulking, we typically never mask the ceiling. The only times we really mask the ceiling is when we have a really um, drastic ceiling color change. So if we had like, let's say like a maroon ceiling or something, just some, someone had a different colored ceiling, we would definitely mask the ceiling. And I'll tell you the ceiling is much harder. Well, it takes a lot more time to mask than the wall because you got to get up under it. You got to look at it, get your 16th, 16th uh, reveal between the tape and the molding. And then you gotta work it that way. So that's a sixteenth of an inch away from the molding the whole way down. It's not a difficult task, it's just a time consuming task. So when we have a finished wall and a finished ceiling, we have masking on both top and bottom of the, um, the trim. And that is for the purpose of caulking and painting. We never spray our crowns or anything because it's just way too much masking work in a, in a finished and furnished home. 
it's just not going to happen. We brush all of this stuff. So not only does it help protect the caulking from going down on the wall, whenever we come back and brush it, we have uh, guards now. So when we pull, when we're done, we paint this thing, we pull the tape, we have nice clean paint lines, which is why we recommend some kind of low adhesive tape like the blue tape or anything that's low adhesion that's gonna stick and have a clean like two, two week removal time. Um, don't use masking tape, don't use just regular painter's tape because we have noticed that it pulls off paint and even some paint, even some tapes will pull off texture. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to, that is a nightmare, let me tell you. When it pulls off the paint, it's not a big deal. We go back and touch it up. Unless it's a faux finished wall, um, then it's a nightmare. If you know what a faux finished wall is, you know why, or wallpaper. I've had paint, I've had tape rip off wallpaper, textured wallpaper. It was a nightmare. But yeah, with that, um, that's what we would do. We would just run this here as a, a guide and then we could paint and everything. And when we pull the tape, it would be good. I'm not gonna caulk this with tape on it. Or I guess I will. I have, I have plenty of um, other areas I could caulk without tape. I'll go ahead and caulk this with tape, show you what that looks like, and then I'll move somewhere else and caulk without tape. Or let's just do this. Let me just rip off some of this. So we can just do it from the same area. All right, so when you're caulking with the tape, you've got more of an advantage. We don't have to be as clean with your gun, your caulking gun work and your finger. Because what you can do, you can get it in there, use a nice smooth movement. Oh, and another thing too, a lot of these caulking guns, this one's pretty used, so it doesn't do it as much anymore. They claim they're dripless, but when you let go of the trigger, they still come out slowly. So what you can do is just turn this thing and it releases the pressure because the gears here, that pulls it when you squeeze it. So if you pull it off that gear, it'll turn it off you know, in a sense. Okay, so we got this cocked right here this, on this blue tape. What we're gonna do, and where you have a more of advantage with doing it with tape, is you can kind of just be sloppy with it. So you can, I don't know, just push it, and I'm trying to be sloppy with it, I don't know. But you can, you don't have to be as clean as you would if you were gonna t do it on this raw ceiling with no tape. But what you can do is you can push this in there and just pull it out. I got a little bit of snow plow right there because I was trying to be sloppy with it. But then you, you want to push it into the gap and you want to still see the profile of this, this molding here. You've got the molding there and then you've got the ceiling. This is kind of like a, a zoomed in point of view, if you will. You've got this molding coming into the ceiling like that. It creates this 90 degree on this profile here. You want to see that. You don't want to see a circular, um, like I'll show you here. You don't want to just cock this and just kind of lightly press it. You see how thick that line is right there compared to this? That is so thick and that is so thin. The problem with that, one of the problems with that is when you pull your tape, all that's coming with it. You're gonna be in big trouble. If you're gonna use the masking method with the caulking, you must, you must push that caulking all the way in that gap, clean it up to where you can see the edge of the tape still. All this area right here that I caulked already, all this area right here, I can see the full width of the tape. It's not hidden like it is right here. If you can't see the full width of the tape, uh, you're in trouble, so you need to wipe that off so you can see it. This is what it needs to look like. Just push it in. It filled in the gap. If it's the tape is still visible, and you should be good to go. Now, 
I'm going to pull these tapes now and you should be able to see a difference here and here. So you can see that our gap is here and then our caulking line is here. And it just looks nice and finished. It looks like it belongs there. That's exactly what we want. There's some snow plow on that piece of tape and that is very little snow plow and that's completely fine because that's an advantage of using masking tape. Now if this represents the ceiling, in which case it does, that would have been on the ceiling, that would not be fine. So I was being a little sloppy with that one just to prove the point. But if you're going to caulk without the tape, what you need to do is the same steady pull in the, of the gun and, and movement of the gun. And what you want to do is not push so much. Don't be so firm with your cleaning technique when you're wiping the caulking. So let me show you what I mean. If I was, this is a white ceiling, white trim, white caulking. I don't need to mask the, the ceiling. So what we would do in a real life situation, we would just come around the ceiling, pull like that, nice bead there, and then just gloss over it with the edge of your finger. You still want to have that, that 90 where the crown and the ceiling meet, and I still have it because I'm using the edge of my finger. And this is why it's so important to not cut that that caulking tip so thick because that's what you'll end up with. You'll, you'll, you'll end up with a, um, a big mess up there. You'll end up with a lot of snow plow on the ceiling. And if you've ever seen that, it's really noticeable. So this looks all uniform now. This looks all uniform. And then I'll pull this. I doubt this is going to show up on the camera, but I'll pull this and you'll be able to see how nice and clean that comes out. And that looks really good. So that's kind of the overall basics of caulking. The whole goal of it is to fill in a gap. It's not to round out any profiles. It's not to float anything out necessarily. It's just we've got a a small gap between the wall and the crown, fill it in. We got a small gap between the crown and the ceiling, fill it in. So I'll caulk one of these corners, show you what that looks like, and just kind of say anything in my mind that comes up as I do that as well. One thing you'll notice too, as you're going around a room like this, your rag will start to get filled up with excess caulking. You want to keep that clean because the less caulking you have on the rag, that means the less caulking you're going to have on your hands and the cleaner job you're going to do with the silicone. So clean that out. Just use a bucket. If you're going to do it in the sink, pull that little thing on the sink up and dilute the caulking and turn it into basically water before you let it go down the drain. Because if you let big chunks of this caulking go down the drain, you can imagine what would happen to the drain there. So just be careful with that. Now we'll get started on this corner. Um, what I do is I just work like a two or three foot section at a time. And I'll get the whole corner, top, bottom, and corner. But if you're just starting out, maybe just do the top first, then the corner, and then the bottom. But the more seamless you can get a corner with top, bottom, and corner, the better of a job it's going to look. It's better of a job you're going to do and it's going to look better. So when you're doing this, you want to remember to feather the edges out. I had a little air pocket right there in the tube, so I'll fill that little piece in. Just a steady pull, steady consistent pull. And then you'll come down on the corner. Same thing on the corner, steady consistent pull. And you'll put down your bead of caulking as they call it. Now what comes out of the caulking tube is called the bead, but you never want to leave a bead on any kind of trim. You always want to keep that profile nice and strong. So 
the bead is what comes out of the tube, you're gonna knock that bead down. So I'll start here, push into that corner, and just get that corner nice and tight. And then I'm gonna pull away from the corner. And then I'm gonna pull away from the corner. If I need to go back and push this corner in more, it'll create ripples in the, the caulking work, and then I'll have to feather it out. So you always wanna feather out and make it look as seamless as possible. Now when you're coming down this corner, a lot of people will wonder about this. Do I leave it thick or do I you know, force it in there? Really, you wanna force it in there. You wanna force it into filling any tiny gap and don't leave it thick. There's no reason to leave it thick. You spend your time getting these nice copes or miters real tight. You don't wanna leave a big bead in there where it's like a rounded over. It looks like there's a huge gap. You wanna see that clean work. All you're doing is filling in like the hairline cracks that are there that when you paint over it, it'll look seamless. That's all you're doing. Now that this corner is done, it just looks way more seamless. It looks like it fits into the wall and the ceiling like it's always been there. Before I put this caulking on, you could see it looked pretty raw. You could tell it was just installed, but now it's like, hey, that actually looks like it belongs there, which is the whole point. Don't overdo it and just keep it simple. That's kind of my basic introduction to caulking. Those are kind of the things that come to mind when I think about teaching someone what they would want to know to get a nice clean line on moldings when you're caulking. And this goes for crown, base, casing, chair rail, panel moldings, wainscot, anything you're doing, you're going to want to have a nice tight line that's just filling in very small gaps that really are out of your control, like ceiling joists, like texture, and things like that. It's not really to fix mistakes, although people use it for that a lot of times. And um, it's just the, the less you can use, the better, but it is a, nece a necessity in the world that we live in where we're not gonna have perfectly flush to the wall moldings and trim. If you look at this area that I showed you on camera, I mean, that looks so clean now versus this gap section over here. I mean, you can see where it's, where the caulking um, stops and then the gap picks up again. This just looks like, wow, it looks like it belongs. And that looks like, eh, it's kind of raw. You need to caulk it. <laughs> so that's kind of where, what this, the whole purpose of this is. It's just to make things look like they belong there. So hopefully you learned something from this video. That's kind of the basic information that I wanted to share as far as caulking. If you feel like I left something out, leave a question below and I'll answer it and let you know if I have the answer to it. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video, which will probably be doing some trim work in this room, installing this door at least. So we'll see you on that one. Take care.